Reddit. What is something that happened at a sleepover which you will never forget? I was in preschool and sleeping at a friend's house down the street with my sister. In the middle of the night, I woke up to screaming and glass shattering, so I got out of bed and followed the noise into the lounge room. His parents were screaming at each other and throwing things around the room. And when they saw me, the mother came running over, pushed me back into the bedroom, and shut the door. Not something I'll forget anytime soon. When we were about 15, my buddy stole some alcohol from his parents and invited me over to drink it with him. When I got there, I went to take a crap and was gone for about five minutes. And when I came back, he had drank almost all of it. I called him an a-hole and drank the bit that was left, which actually got me a pretty good buzz. We decided to watch a movie and I noticed he wasn't looking good. And then he puked all over the floor. His mom was downstairs and I didn't want to get caught, so I started cleaning it up. But he kept puking, like three other piles. I got him to the bathroom and he looked at me and said, guess what? I said, what? And he started peeing his pants and then laughed like it was the funniest thing in the world. I got him back to his bed and he barfed again. This was like the fourth or fifth pile and had only gotten one cleaned up so far and not cleaned up very well because I was kind of drunk. He got out of bed and then took his pee-soaked pants and underwear off and was looking for new pants and I decided I'd had enough. I was not going to deal with a barf and drunk naked person who was doing nothing to help the situation. On my way out the door, I told his mom he wasn't feeling well and then I left. And when I got home, my parents knew I was drunk and grounded me. His mom blamed everything on me and called my parents to tell them that I got her little angel drunk. What a punch to the gut. That nice friend goes through all the trouble to help his friend out. He picks up his piles of vomit. He goes to great lengths to protect his friend from his mom. And after all that, he gets the blame for it? The kid who got drunk definitely owes a thousand favors for this and needs to own up to his actions. I think the friendship probably depends on it. I was around seven years old and I had a rich friend named Kevin who could afford all sorts of cool toys because his dad imported and exported them along with other goods. During one sleepover, he brought over one of those remote control fart boxes. Instead of playing with it, we hatched a master plan to sneak it under my parents' bed and unleash its power when they were going to bed. We waited for hours. And finally, when the clock struck midnight, we let it loose. Darn it, Alden, my mother. But it wasn't over. We didn't spam. We waited for them to settle and let it go again and again. Finally, we couldn't take it anymore. My parents had heard us cracking up, and my dad, as boisterous with his colon as he is, realized it wasn't his butt. My friend got a sext from his mom that was meant for her boyfriend. It specifically said the boyfriend's name in it, so I'm certain it wasn't an incest thing. The look on his face and the graphic detail in the text was the funniest effing thing I have ever witnessed. I couldn't fall asleep because I was laughing for hours. In 10th grade, my friend threw a small party at her house because her parents were gone for the week. So fast forward to 3 a.m. I'm in bed with her, she's fully asleep while I'm still fully awake and there's something making a faint noise to my left. My friend is sleeping on the right side of the bed. So I turn my head to the left, and I see it. It's a little blonde girl. Her skin is blue, or in negative, and she has a white pajama dress on, and she's holding a teddy bear. Classic, unoriginal ghost stuff. But I swear I panicked, and I went under the covers. I hear her coming next to me. The faint sound that I heard was her breathing. The left side of my head, shoulder, and arm got cold. And I started shaking my friend so she wakes up and I say, Anna, there's an effing ghost in your room. All sleepy, she replies, just ignore her and she'll leave. What? The little girl left after two minutes. I didn't sleep at all that night. And the next morning, my friend tells me that sometimes the ghost comes to her room or in the basement at night. Now, I know some people don't believe in ghosts, but this was one of the most terrifying things I've experienced. Nope, 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 nope. What is worse than a ghost lurking in a house? a ghost who apparently feels welcome and has settled in. That ghost seems way too comfortable with her surroundings. Next thing you know, she's going to be inviting all of her ghost friends over for a party. And that just can't happen, people. In the comments, anybody else have a weird or creepy ghost story to share? I went to bed at a friend's house one time. The next morning, I told him that I had grabbed lemonade from the fridge in the middle of the night and spilled a whole cup. I was like eight, and they didn't have lemonade. First time I ever saw a was at a sleepover and it totally blew my mind. I had no idea that there was this whole world of sexual possibilities beyond like awkwardly humping my pillow. Okay, not a sleepover technically, but more of a trip away. 
My class went to a trip and the boys slept in one room and the girls in another. Now, on one of the last days of the week-long trip, one of the boys in my class decided it would be a great idea for us all to wank together at the same time. So, a group of 17 boys wanking furiously in sleeping bags was definitely one of the most what the F am I doing moments of my life. We were like 13 or 14 at the time, and that is a moment I'll never forget. So explain to me how all 17 of these knuckleheads all decided to join in a large-scale jacking session. How does the how do the logistics work anyway? Are they all making awkward eye contact while they're in their sleeping bags? Does it just turn into a competition on who can finish first? I bet these kids obviously don't ever talk about this again. It is just going to linger as that weird homoerotic memory that they can't shake, even if they wanted to. I had a big birthday party sleepover when I was 11 or 12 and invited a bunch of my friends to spend the night. My mom made me invite the kid from down the road who was in my grade, but I never really noticed him. He was really small and took a lot of medicine. Anyway, he wet the bed that night and was humiliated by everyone there, including me. I saw him on the bus the following week and I felt bad about what had happened. So we became best friends and hung out most weekends until the end of high school. He told me he had a liver transplant in kindergarten and was facing some serious health threats in the future. We remained close and last summer his liver failed and he passed away in hospice care at the age of 25. Was about eight or nine years old at my mate's house watching The Exorcist. My mate's dad thought it would be funny to go outside and lift the window shutters up and scream through the windows effing terrifying. When I was a kid, my mom had a friend who would always bring her son over to hang out. Anyways, they arranged a sleepover for us that he was especially stoked about. So it's lights out and he almost immediately starts crying. He kept saying, my mom wanted a girl over and over. I'm still not sure what the heck happened. I bet this other kid is like, how is this my problem? I bet they didn't even want this kid over for the sleepover to begin with. Sounds like it was a pity invite in the first place, but it sounds like the poor kid certainly needs someone to talk to. And maybe that person needs to be a therapist. I think there is some unresolved issues between he and his mom. Friend's birthday party, I was 12. I took a giant poop, flushed the toilet, and walked away. And an hour later, his mom yelled from the bathroom, OMG, there's crap everywhere. The five of us went to the bathroom and see a thin layer of water and runny crap all over the floor with his mom angrily staring at us. Everyone knew it was me and pointed it out immediately, and I was never allowed at his house again. I still run into his mom sometimes, and I can tell she still isn't over it. I'm just impressed that a little 12-year-old was able to produce such an impressive log that managed to clog a toilet to such a high level. I mean, what did you eat that led up to this? I imagine at a birthday party it was a deadly layer of pizza, birthday cake, and Mountain Dew. It's like the brown bomb trifecta. Poor guy just straight up gets called out by his friends, too. It's a little hypocritical of the mom to never invite him back as well, because you're telling me this mom has never destroyed the plumbing in the house?